ago, if you thought it came from a lab, if you raised that, you were called a nut job, you got censored on Twitter, you were blacklisted on Twitter, you were even called a crackpot by the very scientist who in late January sent emails to Dr. Fauci and said it came from a lab. They called you crackpot. Is that right, Dr. Redfield? I think the most upsetting thing to me was the uh, Baltimore Sun calling me a racist because I said this came from a Wuhan lab. Dr. Reptil, you, were, you're, uh, you, you ran the CDC and you were on the Coronavirus Task Force, is that right? Correct. That was formed on January 29th, 2020, is that right? Correct. Two days later, Dr. Fauci gets an email from Dr. Anderson which says what? Virus looks engineered, virus not consistent with evolutionary theory. Is that accurate? That's my understanding. Next whatever. day, I know. He, did he share that email with you, by the way, Dr. Redfield? No. As a member of the task force, as a head of CDC, did he share that email with you? No. Okay. Next day, February 1st, Dr. Gary sends Dr. Fauci another email. That email says, I don't know how this happens in nature, but it would be easy to do in a lab. Did he share that email with you, Dr. Redfield? No. Three days later, they changed their position 180 degrees. The question is why? Uh, two of the signatures of the original email to uh, Dr. Fauci, that, that's Dr. Anderson and Dr. Gary, were awarded a $9 million grant for the... So there's reason. $9 million reasons why they changed their mind. They get $9 million bucks from Dr. Fauci. So the, the director of national intelligence knew this thing came from a lab. The secretary of state knew this thing came from a lab. Common sense tells you this thing came from a lab. And frankly, even the guys who called us names knew it came from a lab because we have their emails. Everyone knew at the get-go. You knew at the get-go. And yet, they tell us just the opposite. Why? They didn't want unwanted attention to the relationships um, that were taking place between Western virologists and those working within maybe the, 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 the Wuhan Do Institute you think maybe? of Virology and funding sources for some yeah. of that research. Our into. money to a lab in China that wasn't up to code, that was doing gain of function research, and that's where this thing came from. That's what they didn't want us to know. You agree with that, Mr. Ratcliffe? I do agree with that. The journal article that said, SARS coronavirus is poised for human emergence in 2016. And what, you might ask, Dave, was the coronavirus poised for human emergence? It was WIV1. Wuhan Institute of Virology Virus 1. By the time we get to 2017 and 2018, the following phrase entered into common parlance among the community. There is going to be an accidental or intentional release of a respiratory pathogen. Four times in April of 2019, seven months before the allegation of patient number one, four patent applications of Moderna were modified to include the term accidental or intentional release of a respiratory pathogen as the justification for making a vaccine for a thing that did not exist. In September of 2019, the world was informed that we were going to have an accidental or intentional release of a respiratory pathogen so that by September 2020, there would be a worldwide acceptance of a universal vaccine template. That's their words right in front of you on the screen. The intent was to get the world to accept a universal vaccine template and the intent was to use coronavirus to get there. And the last slide. Until an infectious disease crisis is very real, present, and at the emergency threshold that is often largely ignored. To sustain the funding base beyond the crisis, he said, we need to increase the public understanding for the need for medical countermeasures such as a pan-influenza or pan-coronavirus vaccine. A key driver is the media, and the economics will follow the hype. We need to use that hype to our advantage to get to the real issues. Investors will respond if they see profit at the end of the process. Sounds like public health? Sounds like the best of humanity? No, ladies and gentlemen, this was premeditated domestic terrorism stated at the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in 2015, published in front of them. This is an this is an act of biological and chemical warfare perpetrated on the human race and it was admitted to in writing that this was a financial heist and a financial fraud. Investors will follow if they see profit at the end of the process. Major platforms all had high response rates and had 35 percent 
of URLs shared with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube were either labeled, removed, or soft blocked. FBI agent Elvis Chan testified the FBI loan sends encrypted lists to social media accounts, sometimes containing hundreds of accounts and URLs in each list to platforms for censorship one to five times per month. Social media platforms boast that it surveilled 859 million tweets, 21,897,364 tweets on tickets as misinformation. Is that right? That's correct. Or did the government pressure social media to censor Americans for saying things like natural immunity is real? Absolutely. Did the government pressure social media to censor Americans for saying things like gain-of-function research happened in that lab in China? Absolutely. Did government pressure social media to censor Americans for saying things like the virus likely came from a lab? That is right within the heartland of our evidence. Did government pressure social media to censor Americans for saying things like the vaccinated don't, getting vaccinated doesn't prevent COVID and it doesn't necessarily stop transmission of COVID? Absolutely. So all those were true statements. But according to the Democrats, it's fine for the government to pressure social media to take those statements down. We see email after email after email from the White House, from Mr. Flaherty, pressuring specifically Facebook, but also other social media platforms to take down disfavored viewpoints. And the emphasis in those emails is on true content. The reason that the emphasis on true content is because he almost says this in so many words in one of the emails that the true content is what they perceive to be doing the most to undermine the narrative that the White House favored at the time.